our hearts and our minds and our mouth with the word of Elohim. They said the word is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb, right? So you're about to, to, to eat something that is sweet. Sweet to the taste. So let's read together. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and knowledge, all kinds of craftsmanship, to make artistic designs for work in gold, in silver, and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones for settings, and in the carving of wood, that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And behold, I myself have appointed with him Oliab. Baruch Hashem. So we're going to just read that right there. So we have been introduced to two characters. What are their names? Bezalel and Aholiab. Good. I don't know if I mentioned to you before, but let me just tell you what these names mean. The name Bezalel and Oliab are looped to the sanctuary. Bezalel means in the shadow of Elohim. So Bezalel means in the shadow of Elohim. That's what his name means. It means what? In the shadow of Elohim. And Aholiab, remember that, that B there is really V. Aholiab means the father's tent. Aholiab means the father's tent. So let's, go, let's get an insight. Remember, another teaching. Bezalel means in the shadow of God. And Oli, Aholiab means the father's tent. All right. So, what tribe was Bezalel from? Judah. Tribe of Judah. Judah. Okay. So, and Oliab was from what tent? Dan. Tribe of Dan. Dan. So the Most High searches, who knows the hearts of men, looked into the tribe of Judah and saw Bezalel, knew his name, knew him before his birth, and said, listen, I have appointed him to do this work. And then also he looked and he saw Oliab and said, I have appointed him to come alongside and help Bezalel. And he brought them together, one from the tribe of Judah and one from the tribe of Dan. Judah means praise, praise or thanksgiving. And Dan means judge. Right. So judge. So here we see something coming together. You have praise and thanks and judge or discernment coming together. Because when you come together, you and I, our life should be a praise. And you and I should ensure that we judge what? righteously and so when we look at the tabernacle we see in how our life should be we should be to the praise of his glory and you and I should make righteous judgment because in so doing we are in the shadow of Elohim and we are in where the father's tent Baruch Hashem now you know that verse in Psalm 91 verse 1 so let's hold there now and let's go across it Psalm we're coming back to that passage, we're just going across to Psalm 91. Remember what the name means. So, verse 1, Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, Most High is El Elyon, will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's El Shaddai. So, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of Almighty. And I will say to Hashem, my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim in whom I trust. Now, this language is alluding to the sanctuary, yes? Right. So he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Where is the shelter of the Most High? The tabernacle. And will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Where is that? The Holy of Holies. So he's saying to us something. He who dwells continuously, habitually, not just visit, right? We don't just want visitation, we want habitation. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow. Are you seeing an allusion to, to that name? Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem. And then it says that no tent shall, no plague shall come near your dwelling. Good. So seeing the allusion there to shadow and tent. Please, brethren, consider this, and I want us to begin to say this now. 
I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. Let's say that to him. My refuge and my fortress, my Elohim in whom I trust. Let's say it again. My refuge and my fortress, my Elohim in whom I trust. What he's saying, brethren, if we can receive it, is that as we come into the Holy of Holies, in the grace of King Yeshua, by the blood of Messiah, we come into the Holy of Holies, and as it were, we are under the shadow of the Most High. It's as if we are right in front of the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. We are right in front of His throne, and that's where we dwell, in the secret place of the Most High. It's the Holy of Holies. It is the tabernacle, and that's where He's saying He wants us to be. That's why He's given us these names. But let's go back again to Exodus 31. He said, Moses, well, let me ask you a question. Was Moses himself to be the craftsman of the tabernacle? No. no. Did he command Moshe? Yes. yes. So let's go back to verse 6 at the end. 31 verse 6. Verse 7, verse 6 says, Behold, I myself have appointed him, although he have the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all who are skillful, I have put skill that they may make all that I have commanded you. So who did Elohim command? Moshe. But was Moshe to build the tabernacle? No. no. He was going to, he had a command from Elohim. But God says, listen, I'm going to send to you people who will be able to do that which I commanded you. Amen. And I'm seeing in this, brethren, a powerful lesson from us and a powerful lesson for you. Abba has a, a work that he has commanded us to do. And I know that in our own strength, we cannot do it. And so even before I saw you and knew you, when there was no one in the secret place of the Most High, your servant, Beshem Yeshua, prayed for those whom he will send to come alongside and do the work that he has commanded his servant and son to do. And as I look out here, I see it and I say, my Father and my God, thank you. Thank you. Because faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And I had already seen a tabernacle, I had seen a pattern, and I knew the command, bring my people into my presence, but I knew I couldn't do it on my own. I knew that he had to send whom he would send and raise up skillful people who would do the work of ministry. And that's it for us, brethren, and that's it for you. God has put a work upon your life, and you cannot do it. Why? Because it is beyond you. So he has to bring people alongside you to fulfill that which he has commanded you to do. So that you will not rely upon your own strength and ingenuity and say, I have done it. No, the work that he has given us to do is so great that we cannot do it on our own. And if we do it on our own, that's not the work that he gave us to do. Because what he gives us to do, we cannot do it on our own. He commands us and then we realize, Father, okay, you have commanded me, but I know I can't do it. You see, we have to come to that place where we recognize of our own selves, we can do nothing. But in Messiah, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Baruch Hashem. Okay. So the Lord said, I fill him with the spirit of Elohim. Now please understand the spirit of Elohim. You and I should understand now that in the days of the apostles, the Jewish people avoided using the divine names and the term Spirit of God and Spirit of Hashem by substituting those terms with the Holy Spirit. Now let me just give, give this over. In Christian theology, we think the Holy Spirit, and we think the Holy Spirit was only there from, from Matthew to Revelation. But we are understanding now that the Jewish people would say the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Hashem, or the Holy Spirit, as an evasive way of saying God without saying God. Yeah. So when you see Holy Spirit, you say, okay, but the Holy Spirit wasn't given until then. No, you need to understand. So it does a work on our theology, because this means that the apostolic uh, era terminology, Bezalel was filled with what? The Ruach HaKodesh. So, so Christian readers sometimes are surprised to realize that the Holy Spirit was active and filling people long before Acts chapter 2. Amen. Are you seeing that? Long before. He said, only in Acts chapter 2. No, this is telling us, listen, he did that way before. Alright? So be encouraged with that. Good. So, 
What was he filled with? Let's go back. Because this is where I want us to, to see by our best grace. What was he filled with? Let, let's come down to verse 7, um, my brother Brent. So he said, let me just watch it again. Pick it up, sorry, pick it up from verse 1 again. 31 verse 1. Then Hashem spoke to Moshe and saying, see. What did, the, what did he say? See. All right. See, I have called by name. It's not by chance that he called this person because this person is what? In the shadow of God. So you and I are caused to live in the where? Shadow of God. Amen. He that dwells in the shelter and in the secret place, in the shadow of the Most High. Shadow is a good thing, brethren. I don't know why our Christian theologies, we, we think, okay, we have the substance, we don't want the shadow. Listen, this is one shadow that you want, right? Baruch Hashem. Do you want to be in the shadow? Yes! This is a good shadow to be in. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I because when I go by that rock, I'm in the shadow of the Most High. And if I'm in the shadow, then I need and I know that the substance is right there. Oh, that we may understand that the shadow of the Most High is upon us. But let's continue. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, my light. Uri, my light. The son of Ur. Son of Ur. Son of Ur. Where did we know about Ur? Aaron and Ur. So the person who was holding up Aaron, uh, Moshe's hand, his relative was here, right? Baruch Hashem. Can, uh, those who are faithful... Those who are faithful would be one who would be used to do the work of ministry. Commit to faithful men or faithful women, those who will teach. If you're not faithful in little, you will not be faithful in much. So in this community, when you prove yourself faithful, then in the little, then you will be approved to be faithful in much. But if you are given an assignment and you say, that's just a little thing. The ways of Hashem is past finding out. If you are unfaithful in little, you will be what? Unfaithful in much. If you don't read and say, okay, well, when I get much, then I will be faithful. No, 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 no. You need to be faithful in little. When nobody is seeing but the Most High. And you are faithful in that little task. And when He sees faithfulness, he says, I could award you and reward you with more work. Baruch Hashem. Continue on, it says this. I have filled him with what? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Remember, the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High. Spirit of God. In what? In wisdom. In understanding. In knowledge. In all kinds of craftsmanship. So the Holy Spirit... <laughs> The gifts of the Spirit, to one I've given wisdom, to another knowledge. So when you read 1 Corinthians 12, you feel, okay, the gifts were now coming. No, 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 they were there before, long before, all right? So, what did God fill him with again? Wisdom. What again? Understanding. And what again? God. Let's say it again. What was he filled with? Wisdom. Understanding. And knowledge. So when Abba gives you and I a task to do, what do we pray for? Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Because to do the work of the Most High, we need to be anointed and appointed, and we need to have that spirit. And so we read in, in Isaiah chapter 11, the spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he was filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and knowledge and the fear of the Lord because Yeshua was given the task to raise up the sanctuary and the sanctuary would be the human lives and so he's filled up to make artistic designs verse 4 for work in gold and silver and bronze what? gold, silver and bronze so did Rav yeah, um, Shaul say that you need to build with what? Gold and silver and precious stones. Where do you think he got that from? Right here. Baruch Hashem. Right here. And so you and I are seeing, brethren, when, listen to this, the day that you and I were born, on that day, some of us were celebrating our birthdays over this month and everything. On the day that we were born, by Abba's grace, we started a building. 
And the day that we die, that's when the building is what? Completed. So our master said to us, in my father's house there are many, and I go to prepare a place for you. And then when I go, I will receive you and bring you up, up there, right? So imagine you go up into heaven, and you're looking for your mansions. And he says, that's yours over there. And you're looking for streets of gold and so forth. He says, listen, your mansion started from the day that you were born. And when you begin to walk in my walk, that's how I was able to infuse into your life gold, silver, precious stones, bronze, and so forth. Are you understanding? So you and I, when we go up there, everything is going to be judged by what? Fire! And if you were and I were just building with, 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 with straw and wood and hay, all right, everything would be what? Burnt up! But you yourself would be saved because you, 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 you believe in the precious blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. But you see you want some gold and silver and precious stone and bronze to withstand that fire of his eyes that would see as no man would see. And so brethren, you and I are only the sum total of that which we produce. You and I are only the sum total of that which we produce. Our lives, what mansion, you stop thinking Hollywood mansion, that's not it. It is our lives. When we go up there, that which we have done on this earth is that which we inherit up there. Because we are going to be rewarded by our works. So know that he is examining our deeds to ensure that you and I are building with what? Gold and silver. Things that can test and withstand the fire. And so you and I have to be asking, Master, I'm about to do this. Is this gold? Is this silver? Is this precious stones? Or is it wood and hay? May we build and be wise master builders, right? And in the cutting of stone, verse 5, for setting and in the carving of wood, that he may, may work in all kinds of what? Craftsmanship. By grace are you saved? Not of yourself, lest any man should? Amen. And what did it say after that? We are his what? Workmanship. Created in Messiah to do what? Good works. So we are his what? craftsmanship and as you and I yield then he builds us into a wonderful mansion well is it us building or the Messiah either or not Greek thinking not either or it is what both he is building and we are building that's why we are laying up treasures in heaven so we have this understanding this king was on this island and he knew that listen it's going to come upon in time when they're going to cast him from his kingdom so what he started to do he said okay there's an island over there so what I'm going to do I'm here now every, every year I'm sending materials across it because see at the end of the certain time they're going to banish him from the island so this is what he said okay they're going to banish me okay and a new king will come but while I'm in office I'm going to be sending gold I'm going to be sending silver and when they banish me I go over to, in, into the island Lay up treasure in heaven. So, Brook Hashem, thank God for Unitrust and everything else, but ensure that you lay up treasure in heaven. Okay, because that's where you're going. When you go up there, it will be, when he says, what is this? He said, well, that is your life. Sober in reality. That's why he said they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Brook Hashem. So, Verse 6, and behold, I myself have appointed with him a holy Ab of the son of Ahimashah, and that, that, that they may make all that I have commanded. And verse 7, in the tent of meeting, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat upon it, and all the furniture of the tent, the table also, and utensils, and the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, also with its incense. And ver, uh, verse 10, the woven garments, as well as the holy garments of Aharon the priest, and the garments of his sons, which carry on the priesthood, the anointing oil also, and the fragrance on incense and the oil um, the holy place that they may make them according to all that I have commanded you so brethren as we look at this I want to just explain something else again what are the three things wisdom, wisdom. wisdom. what does Bezalel mean Bezalel means what in the shadow of Elohim and Aholiab mean 
Good. So you and I want to be in the Father's tent in the shadow of Elohim. It's coming together, right? Baruch Hashem. And these two guys were appointed and anointed by the Most High to do these things. So Moshe had the command, but he had to raise up others to help him. So, according to the Torah, the spirit-filled person has been filled with wisdom. I'm going to give you this word, hukmah. Say hukmah. Hook. God, that's wisdom. And bina. Say bina. That's his understanding and knowledge, which is there. Da'at. Say da'at. So what are these three things? Hukmah, Bina, and Da'at. So wisdom is what? Hukmah. And, and understanding? Bina. And knowledge? Da'at. Very good. Now, these are supernatural gifts. The terms overlap. But let's see how we can distinguish them. Hukmah refers to a person with moral component. When you say wisdom, don't think Socrates and Aristotle. That's not the wisdom we're talking about, the wisdom of the world. We're talking about the wisdom that descends from above, right? That's the wisdom that we're talking about. So wisdom is, is what, brethren? The moral component, Baruch Hashem. So in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is, is described as opposite to what? In the book of Proverbs, you see somebody is wise and the other person is what? Foolish, Baruch Hashem. So who is a, fool, a foolish person? One who is not white according to the things are of the most high. Right, good. Now, Bina presents insight into complex things. The ability to conceptualize beyond the surface of the problem and propose a solution. You know some people just look, all they see is things that what? Surface value, but inside Bina allows you to do this, brethren. Look at it, it presents insight into complex situations. Have you been going through situations that are baffling? You need some what? Bina, you need some insight. Remember, the four creatures they have eyes where? Before and within, right? So that you can have what? Insight into this situation. Father, I'm going through this situation. I don't understand. Give your servant understanding. And while I'm going through it, give me what? Wisdom. And if you lack wisdom, you ask for wisdom so you know how to morally act in this situation. Right? Good. Next one. That knowledge pertains to the realization of truth. It is more than information. That incorporates that information into a total synthesis. So that is more than information. It is the realization of him who is true. So let's say those three words again in English. Wisdom. Understanding and knowledge. And say it in Hebrew as good Hebrew student. Wisdom is hukma. Hukma and understanding. Bina and knowledge. And wisdom means what again? The moral component. And understanding means what? Insight, ability to, to, to connect and, 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 and see beyond the surface area and, and, be, and that is what? A realization of truth. So you and I are going through life. Listen brethren, you and I are going through life. And we need wisdom. Wisdom beyond our years. So that we would not rely on our own understanding. Nor would we be wise in our own eyes we must be wise in whose eyes his eyes because you and i would see a situation and if we don't ask for wisdom we deal with the situation according to how we see it that is unwise or said nicely that is foolish so we have the wise and foolish virgins so wisdom says that you need to have a moral component wisdom says that you need to have more than just basics you need extra and what is that extra we all need wisdom that comes from above right in any given situation james says if any man lacks let him ask because he will not upbraid and he will give what liberally and it's not greek wisdom it's the wisdom that descends from above that he wants to give us so you and i should be praying father give your servant wisdom what did solomon pray for Wisdom, Baruch Hashem, moral component. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, we would have seen this, go across, Brent, please, with me, with 1 Corinthians 2, 7 to 8. So what is a spirit-filled person from 
Exodus 31, can somebody tell me? What is a spirit-filled person? One who's filled with what? Wisdom! Very good. So from the Torah, this is Torah wisdom now. A spirit-filled person is one who is filled with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So automatically you're thinking, okay, a spirit-filled person is not only one who can talk in tongues. It is more than that. A spirit-filled person is one whom you, in whose life you can see the manifestation of wisdom. Because wisdom is justified by her children. So what does it mean? When they make a decision, the outcome of it is wisdom. So you know that the decision that you made was right because wisdom is justified by the fruit of your decision, by the wisdom for which you came. It is beyond you. And when people see it, they recognize, how did you know that? How did you make that decision? And they said, oh, a people that has got so near, a wise and understanding people. I pray that other people would be saying this of us. So, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Yes, good. Baruch Hashem. Good. Thank you, Father. So, to each one is given. Have you there? So, to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for what? For to one is given the word of? Through the Spirit. To another, the word of? According to the? So, Abba is saying, listen, where did Paul get this thing about wisdom and knowledge from? From the Torah. So he's thinking, listen, he wants the Messianic community, the redeemed community, to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and with understanding and with knowledge, right? So what did he pray for in Ephesians 1 7? Can you go to that, Brother Brent? What did the apostle pray for? Let's see it, brethren. Ephesians 1 7. Up down to verse 17. That's a good scripture, but that, that, that's not the one in particular. Verse 17. What it says? God, stop right there. What is Paul praying for? Spirit of wisdom and in the knowledge of it. You see, you're seeing these words now and you're connecting it back to the Torah. So he wants the redeemed community, he wants you and I to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? Knowledge of him. And what we say knowledge is Hebraically realization of truth. Remember we learned that, right? Wisdom is what again? Hebraically? No, wisdom is moral component and understanding is insight beyond the surface area and knowledge is what? Realization of truth. So you and I should grow in the grace and in the knowledge. In other words, come to the what? Realization of truth. See him for who he is. All right. So, Colossians. Go to Colossians. So did he pray for the congregation in Ephesus? Yes. What did he pray for, for them again? That they would be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And you and I, brethren, I'm praying, Abba, that each of us, as we are filled with that spirit, we would know who our God is. That's why I'm going to be teaching my Abba's grace the other part. All right? Colossians 1, 9 to 10. I hope this is the right scripture. Colossians 1, 9 to 10. My brother Brent. Colossians 1, 9 to 10. What it says? What is the heart of the apostle for his ch children that will be filled with what? Baruch Hashem. So what should you and I be, what should you and I be praying for over our lives, over our families, over this community, over the body of Messiah? That what? We be filled with what? What three things? Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You see, whatever you do individually, you do on a macro scale. So in any given situation, you pray, Father, give to our leaders wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So you know what's okay, so just bless Rav. Come on, that's not good enough. Just bless our general prayer. Give to him, Father, wisdom, 
understanding and knowledge that's the prayer that the rock wants you to pray and that's the prayer that he would answer and then you come here and you hear something like where did where, where did rap get that from where were you praying for him you drew it out of me because you prayed for, you didn't just say bless rabbi bless Rebecca. no come on that is infant prayer you are growing up give to them father wisdom knowledge understanding and fathers you do it for them Lord do for me give to my husband wisdom understanding and knowledge give to my you understand it and as you do it you begin to see things and life is a, a joy because when somebody is filled with the Spirit of God you hear wisdom you see wisdom you have understanding and your whole life is different right Baruch Hashem. let's go now to Colossians 2 verse 2 2 to 3 I'm praying, Father, that we are seeing it and we are getting it. Remember what Abba told Moshe to tell? Um, what, 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 what he told Moshe? See that I've called. I'm praying that we're seeing it. Colossians 2, 2 to 3. Let's read. Amen. See those three things jumping out at you? I, 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 are they jumping out at you and you've seen it? What the, what the community should be praying for one for another and what we want to see evident in our midst? So, the biblical spirit filled person possesses real wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. He or she was a person of study who looked deeper than the surface of things. He or she makes connection between the word of Elohim and the life of godliness. Listen, brethren, if you could just sit here. And have all of this but then you go outside and you make no connection then we are unwise you and I have to be able to make connection between all these things outside there because remember the, the, the tabernacle is a what unit so everything is what connected so whatever we learn here is to begin to practice here and begin to go outside because if you only know it here then all we've gotten is information but when we have wisdom and knowledge and understanding then we begin to understand oh that is why this situation is this way oh that's why i have to act this way you make it the what the connection so according to the view of the spiritual life the intellect is the domain of the spirit this means that the study of torah is a thoroughly spiritual pursuit insight into the torah is a sign of the spirit at work let me say that again insight into the torah is a sign of what the spirit at work because it's the spirit of what wisdom so when you and i could look at the torah and be filled with it brethren we know this now the lord entrusted bezalel and oliab with work i want to give you another word the work for work is melaka say melaka right when abba says on the shabbat day you shall not work he's not talking <clears throat> just about the work that you get employment for you get wages for he's talking about creative creativity so you could be here and 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 um, not working but still violating the shabbat because you are doing malaka i'm going to speak some more about that so when understood in this light the craftsman can take pride in his work because it is a spiritual gift from god the talented quilt maker can take pride in her work because she has been invested with the spirit onto malaka of quilt making all right so other species what god has given to us brethren whatever he has given to you our work to do what's the word for work melaka and whatever you do abba has entrusted you to do that so brother terence is building our uh, sister joy is doing this somebody is doing this your household whatever you do we pray that he appear where in the world of our hands because that's where he is appearing to show us his goodness and his grace all right Burkashe. so as we close let me just bring this home to us again as a wise master builder and as using the wise sayings that it could be firmly fixed in our minds as a good teacher i've told you what i was going to tell you i've told you and i'm going to tell you again what i told you what do you need to be filled with wisdom, wisdom. what's your word for wisdom Bukma. and it means what Baruch Hashem. and you know you need to also be filled with what understanding which is what bina which is inside beyond the surface and the other one is what yeah. that which means knowledge which means what realization of truth brethren i pray about that as 
Abba anointed those men of old with those things. We are here today. And you and I need that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Alright? And so I pray, Abba, that each of us would receive that. And so let me just pray for us as we go into the time of praise before Hashem. Father, your understanding is infinite. You are the only wise Elohim. You see beyond the surface because we do not see as men see. We thank you that you see beyond the surface and you could allow us to see beyond the surface of things. Father, we thank you that you are truth and by your spirit of truth, you give us the true assessment of who we are and the situation in which we find ourselves. Our Father and our King, we ask this morning that as we are gathered here as living stones, we ask, Father, that you would open our eyes to see the material in which our lives are at this current state. And that by your grace, we would do teshuva and pray, Abba, that we would put our hands to the plow to do your work. Anoint us and appoint us to the task for which you have called us. And fill us again, as it is said, be being filled with the Ruach. Fill us with wisdom, hukmah. Fill us with bina, understanding. Fill us with that art, knowledge. Fill us with intimacy, the truth of who you are. And so, Father, help us to not look at situations as how others see it. But give us, Father, the perspective of the eager to mount up and see things in broader perspectives and to see things from great heights and swoop down into the situation with the knowledge of Elohim that we would deal with every situation from that above vantage point that we would not be mere people that we would be the tabernacle of the living Elohim that when others see us they would know that we have been with Yeshua whom you have anointed with wisdom knowledge and understanding and so father I pray for each of us individually and for us as a community that we will be filled and be being filled with wisdom. I pray for the naive, those who don't understand that they will be wise. I pray in the name of Yeshua that insight would come. Even if we learn from hindsight, Father, help us to have insight and foresight in the name of Yeshua. For the wise person sees the evil and hides him or herself. Abba, give us of your wisdom and cause us to dwell in, under your shadow and to abide in your tent and to hear words of life as we apply it to our families, our marriages, to our jobs, and to whatever we put our hands to, so that we would not be unwise and lacking understanding, and we would not be ignorant. So thank you, Father, for the gift of your Ruach, that you fill each one who, who's willing to hear your words of life. We bless you, and the living tabernacle of Elohim, who shouts glory, as we behold the Holy One of Israel, say, Amen and Amen. Baruch Hashem. Amen.